Hi everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another monthly mail art video for assignmentsasstamp.com. Today I'm using the plain and simple stamp set from Lawn Fawn, and I'm going to be using the stamp set to create an envelope that I will address and then mail off to a crafty friend. So I'm going to start out by making my envelope using the We Are Memory Keepers 123 punch board. These are the measurements I need for my envelope. I need my paper to be eight and a quarter, and I will start scoring that at three and five eighths. So I'm taking some Strathmore Bristol paper and cutting that to eight and one quarter. Then I'll slide that into my punch board area, line that up with three and five eighths, punch that right there. Then I'm gonna realize I forgot to pull out the arm for the score line. So I'll pull that out and then I'll take the bone folder that comes with the punch board and score on that line all the way up to the very top. I'm going to turn my cardstock to the left and I will line up that score line with the far left little nubby thing coming out of the punch and give that a punch and then I'll do another score line. I'm gonna do this twice more to finish off the other two sides of my envelope. And after I'm done with all of this, I'm going to have the perfectly sized envelope, but made out of some paper that's meant for watercoloring. A lot of envelopes out there aren't meant for lots of water to be on them or to even have paint on them because the paper is very thin and it kind of breaks down. So it's a really great idea to create your own envelope if you're going to be doing a lot of inking, watercoloring, or stamping on your uh, particular mail art that you're doing. So I've closed my punch board, now I'm using the top corner of this punch, the top left corner, to round off those sharp corners on my envelope. Then I can fold up all of those corners, and that's going to give me a really good idea of the size of the envelope so that I can design all of my art that's going to go on the front. So there's my envelope, kind of just roughly folded. So now I'm going to take some VersaFine Onyx Black ink and one of the plain images from that stamp set from Lawn Font. And I'm stamping that sort of in the center of my envelope, a little bit higher up than center. I'm planning to have the recipient's address down below the, the airplane, so I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of room for that. Then took a post-it note and stamped that airplane on the post-it note and trimmed it out using some scissors. Now the adhesive part of the post-it note is right behind the airplane and I did that on purpose so that I could stick this mask over the top of the plane and it's going to protect that image while I add some clouds and other things behind the, the airplane. So the stamp set has this fun banner that can be coming off the back of the airplane so I'm stamping that to the left and then I'm going to create a mask for that banner as well because I'm going to have the lines of the clouds go behind the banner. So I'll place that over top of that banner area and then I can grab a couple of the cloud images. There's actually three cloud images in that stamp set. There's a large, a medium, and a small and I'm stamping all three of these. And I want to make sure that I have them kind of spaced out. All right, so now I'm gonna remove the masks and you can see how well that worked. It puts the clouds so they look like they're behind the airplane and the banner. And I just store my masks on the back of the stamp set so that they're there the next time I wanna use that stamp set. So I'm taking some blue painter's tape and painting or taping off this envelope onto a hard board. Um, not only will this hold that paper down to the board so it dries a bit more flat, but it will also protect the flaps of the envelope so they don't get any watercolor on them. So um, I also used some post-it tape just to cover those flaps because I know myself and I kind of like splash watercolor around a little bit and I didn't want any of those uh, droplets to fall onto the flaps. So I'm using some Distress Ink colors for this watercoloring and I'm going to make this more of a monochromatic look. So it's all going to be shades of brown. I'm starting out with a vintage photo and um, I've got this nice brush from Royal and Lang Nickel. This is, uh, I think it's a one inch brush and I'm dropping in areas of vintage photo. I wet down my envelope uh, with lots of water first and then dropped in this vintage photo and I sprayed it with water to soften those edges and then used my heat tool to heat up all of those wet areas. And it took a little bit of time to dry, but it wasn't too bad. I did use my paper towel to sop up some of those really wet puddles, 
but I really love how this turned out. I love the effect of Distress Ink when it dries like this because you almost get really bright halos of color. So I'm going to move on to painting the actual airplane. So I've put out some more color and the color I'm using now is um, I think it's still vintage photo actually, I'm putting more vintage photo out and then I'm going to darken it up with some ground espresso. So I'm putting out that color first and I'll also paint the banner as well. And I'm just putting this color out and you could definitely leave it like this, all one color, paint it all in one color. But when you add a darker shade to just really intensify the contrast, it really makes the image pop. So I'm using some ground espresso and I'm adding some more shading on the bottom of that airplane, also a little bit on the banner, because I wanna make sure that there's lots of contrast and that this airplane really stands out. There's gonna be a lot going on on this envelope, including the stamps and the address, so I wanted to make sure that that would stand out. So I have all of these really fun vintage postage stamps. These are unused vintage postage stamps, so they're still valid, and you can send your mail using these stamps. And so I had to put on quite a few to have them total up to a little bit more than a regular uh, one ounce first class envelope, just because this envelope I think is going to be a little bit on the thicker side, considering that the envelope is made out of a thicker paper. And then also once I have the card inside, I think it's going to be a little bit thicker than usual. So I think this actually totals up to about 76 cents or somewhere around that. And that's going to make sure that it gets to uh, the recipient. So this address that I'm using today is um, one that I have permission to use. So no worries about putting someone's address on blast on the internet. But I thought it was just super fun to write her name below the airplane scene and kind of a loopy cursive. And then mixing up the rest of the address with capital letters and more of that cursive. I'm going to use a pilot envelope addressing pen to go over these areas that I penciled in. And this pen in particular is waterproof. So if you did want to address it first, like stamp, address it, and then watercolor, like if you want to make sure you have the address on there without any mistakes or things like that, you definitely could have done this first before all of the watercoloring. But you don't have to, and I decided to just go ahead and address it after the fact. And one of the reasons why I penciled in the address was to make sure that I would have the spacing right and have everything spelled correctly before coming in with that permanent pen. So I'm just writing in all of her address and making sure that's very legible. And um, I'm, uh, this is one of my favorite black pens. So I use it all the time and I'm so happy that Simon Says Stamp carries it now. Adding in that zip code right at the very bottom and then I'm going to go back over her name and I'm going to thicken up some of those lines. I'm kind of doing like a faux brush lettering with it. I'll do that in a minute here. I forgot that I added please deliver to to the banner so that it finishes off the, the recipient's address area. So I'm putting this on and I'm making sure I'm kind of writing along the same lines as that banner. I'll just squeeze that little word two in there. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna go back and thicken up some of those lines. So after that was done, I came back with an eraser. I just used the eraser end of my pencil that I used for sketching and erased all of those lines. And because this pen is waterproof, it dries very quickly. So I wasn't concerned about smudging any of the lines. So then I added my PO box uh, on the flap for the return address. And then I was able to adhere my envelope uh, together. I don't want it closed because I still have to put that card inside, but I did just put some adhesive strips on the bottom flap um, using some express it tape. And I leave the very corner free because that's going to be um, up above the two flaps. So I added those adhesive, folded the two flaps in on the sides, and then folded up that bottom flap. 
And so my envelope is pretty much all together. The only thing I have left to do is to make sure that it's going to withstand any moisture that comes uh, into its way. So I'm using some Distress Microglaze or Distress Glaze. And the way you use this, if you've seen any of my envelope videos in the past, you probably already know about this, but um, you kind of just put some on your fingertip and smear it onto the areas where you want some waterproofing. And you want to add it pretty liberally. You want to make sure it coats all those areas. And then you can take a paper towel and buff off any of that excess. You may have noticed I'm purposely avoiding the postage stamps. That's because this coating really prevents any moisture or anything going on top. And the post office does need to be able to cancel out those postage stamps. So when you do microglaze or distress glaze, do not put them over your postage stamps. So I have a nice coating that will protect that area. And that's the envelope for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. This is a really fun envelope to create. And I think you could recreate it using a bunch of different colors. I think it'd be really pretty in blues or even in purples as well. Thanks so much for watching. I will catch you guys in a new monthly mail art video very, very soon.